Today, our guest here in the studio is Wani Michael, who is a member of the uh, People's Coalition for Civil Action, or known as uh, PCCA. Wani Michael, it's good to have you with us. It's been a while, almost three years. Welcome to our studio here in uh, Nairobi. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, iRadio. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, the invitation by iRadio. I remember the last time I was on iRadio was 2021, and... Uh, uh, this is a historic moment for me to mm -hmm. speak to uh, our people back home mm -hmm. and also on the very important sub uh, subject of peace. Mm -hmm. So I'm very, very delighted to be uh, on the studio of iRadio mm -hmm. uh, for the first time and I hope we'll be able to have a very constructive and uh, a very mm -hmm. uh, robust conversation on the processes that is ongoing in Nairobi. Right, let's dive into it, Wani uh, uh, Michael, and let's have your... Uh, your assessment on the atmosphere so far. You've been in this uh, process for some time now. Uh, how would you describe the process as we speak? Uh, first of all, I think it is important for us to understand how this process started. Mm. Um, this process started by President Salfa Kir um, initiating the process by writing to the Kenyan President, His Excellency uh, William Ruto, to assist in mediating between the government, the Artigono, and the whole lot groups and other stakeholders who had grievances and issues with the RT Gono. Mm. Um, uh, President Ruto accepted the invitation, mm. uh, and, and, and that's when the, 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 the talks uh, started. Uh, I would like to say that the talks have been progressing uh, so well, of mm. course with some challenges here and there, as in every political process like this, mm. you expect some challenges, but I could say that the talks are progressing well because the talks are led by General Lazarus Simbeo and Ambassador Guyo, supported by very able secretariat. And I think uh, most of Sudanese uh, know who General Lazarus Simbeo is. He understands the context of South Sudan because he, he mediated the Comprehensive Peace Agreement. Mm. He knows his political leaders uh, one by one. Uh, so I, I believe that this process will be able to bring uh, the fundamental change that some of us have been advocating for, but most importantly, we were to bring peace and stability to the people of South Sudan. And we want to sincerely thank the government of Kenya for hosting us and facilitating the talks. Mm. And, and what's the, uh, the view of uh, PPCA on, uh, I understand we have these uh, four uh, key areas that are being uh, discussed in uh, the 75-page report, uh, which was actually uh, given back to you, uh, to the parties, and you have like uh, three days now to uh, report on Monday. But let's talk about the four uh, thematic areas, especially looking at the justice or the governance uh, part, the perspective of uh, PPCA uh, on that, uh, Wani. Uh, first of all, uh, we made it publicly clear as uh, PCCA, we are not here for political positions. We do not want to, to have an agreement which focus on power sharing agreement. As PCC, our position is that the Tumeine initiative must be able to deliver a constitutional agreement because we believe that one of the primary problems of South Sudan is constitutional matters mm -hmm. or constitutional crisis. Mm -hmm. So we, we are advocating for a constitutional agreement as opposed to power sharing political agreement like the RRCs, which became more of a, pol of a political power sharing agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, what we mean by a constitutional agreement is that an agreement that leads us into writing of a new constitution so that the people of South Sudan could, can be able to have their powers with them. We want a species here that the power of the people must be given back to the people of South Sudan as opposed to political leaders or political parties continue to share power to rule uh, peace agreements. So we, 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 we are really advocating on, 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 on that. Secondly, we believe that for you to have a very genuine constitutional making process, the current uh, structures that are established by the RRCs will not deliver for us peace or, or will not deliver for us a constitution that the people uh, will desire for. So we are also advocating that there is need to establish an independent institution or mechanism that will be able to spearhead and oversee the constitution making process because we believe that the National, the National Constitutional Review Commission mm -hmm. is deeply politicized because you have uh, 55 representation of parties to the Artigono political parties and you have 45% of the stakeholders who are supposed to be representative of the people. So you are going to have a commission that will focus 
on political issues and political grievances of individuals. One of the things that also we are advocating as PCCA is that you don't write a constitution that addresses individual grievances. You need to address the issues that young people are desiring for, what women are desiring for, what the people of South Sudan aspire for. Mm -hmm. And we make uh, as PCCA also, we are not bringing new things on the table. We are here reinforcing the resolution of the national dialogue. Most of our position papers on the issues you mentioned, security, mm -hmm. governance, justice, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and economy, mm -hmm. are basically the resolutions of the national dialogue. So we are saying you don't need new positions because the people spoke during the national dialogue. Mm -hmm. So our position is the People's Coalition for Civil Action, PCCA, we associate ourselves with the national dialogue, and that's what we bring on the table no. for, for this negotiation. Right, right. And, and when you're talking about having a constitutional uh, agreement, and you're talking about, don't you think now, are you, aren't you trying to nullify the ongoing process by uh, the revitalized peace agreement back home uh, there, the process of making a permanent constitution? We, we, we are not trying to nullify the process. Mm -hmm. Remember, the constitution making process started in 2012. Mm -hmm. Today, the presidential decree that was written in 2012. Now, 12 years down the road, we don't have a constitution. Mm -hmm. They have not done um, a lot of public consultation. They have not done a lot of work outside because they have been marginalized or they have been underfunded by the government since 2012. Uh, they have not received any funding. Remember recently, mm -hmm. there was a government funding to key institutions like the Political Parties Council. Mm -hmm. I think they received about $5 million. The National Election Commission received about $15 million. But the National Constitution Review Commission received nothing. Mm -hmm. So we believe that if you want to have a, a, a constitution-making process that, that speaks to the people of South Sudan, then you need to establish an independent uh, commission or an independent body which is hybrid that involves both uh, South Sudanese and non-South Sudanese, as opposed to having the huge number, 57 members, that you need to take care of them. I remember, I think the last thing they have done so far is have meetings for themselves or have some training for themselves in the commission, but they cannot do some outreach. And we also believe that uh, consultations was done during the national dialogue on those issues of constitution. Mm. The national dialogue people spoke from the grassroots. Unfortunately, the constitutional uh, making process act does not make reference to the national dialogue, even the agreement itself. Mm -hmm. So we believe that there is a deliberate attempt to isolate and ignore the national dialogue resol uh, resolutions. So we, we strongly um, advocate that the resolution of the national dialogue should form one of the key bases of writing the new constitution. You don't need to consult people because you already consulted them during the national dialogue. They spoke on those issues. They spoke on economy, they spoke on security, they spoke on federalism, uh, and other issues that concern the people of South Sudan. So we, we feel there are a lot of literatures that you can be able to use. Secondly, you have the revitalized agreement that has very good uh, articles that have very good proposals. Mm. Unfortunately, you have the wrong people implementing the agreement itself. You have the transitional constitution of the Republic of South Sudan as amended. Mm -hmm. You have the SPLM manifesto of 1980, uh, 1983 mm -hmm. and 2008 mm -hmm. and other instruments that you really have, international regional instruments that we believe that can inform us to have a first draft of the constitution because we, we also believe that you cannot write a constitution in the current context of South Sudan where the civil and political uh, space is shrinking and uh, people don't have freedom of speech. So how can it, how can it, can it, can it happen? Where do you want it to happen? Like, for, us, we believe, you talked about. Mm. for us, we believe that the, the two main initiatives must, must be able to deliver for us the first constitutional text. Mm -hmm. and, and we use that to be able to go back home and make consultation. I mentioned very clearly that uh, there are a lot of literatures out there that, you ca that can inform us on issues of constitution. I say it in the National Dialogue, people resolve and there are resolutions that effect. Mm -hmm. People agreed mm -hmm. on what are the issues that they want to look forward. And by the way, constitution making process is a National Dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, does that mean you share a similar position uh, with the opposition groups that uh, the, the, the coalition of the opposition groups right here in the Tumaini because uh, this is similar to what Pagana Mum said yesterday? Absolutely. We, 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 we share the same uh, sentiment that you, you don't need to leave Nairobi to make an initiative without the constitution. Mm -hmm. So we are saying we don't need a power sharing agreement. We need an agreement that speaks about the constitutional reform and how we can write a new constitution so that we can be able to usher into a new political and constitutional dispensation mm -hmm. back home. And, 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 and I think that that is also 
what the opposition uh, believe in, that what they had been talking about, that they're not here for power sharing agreement. They're here to ensure that we fix the, the, the issues that are back home. And what reforms are you talking about here, Oni? Uh, the constitutional reform, you see, one of the things people talked about a lot, mm -hmm. it's uh, the powers that are given to the president, mm -hmm. uh, that certain powers should not be exercised, uh, and, and those powers uh, are supposed to be exercised either by the parliament or by the judiciary. Uh, the other constitutional reforms that we are also talking about, mm -hmm. it's uh, the issue to do with the justice system, for example. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that our Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs He's a chief government uh, prosecutor. Mm -hmm. We are advocating that you need to establish a different department of public prosecution, uh, very independent, mm -hmm. who can be able to see whether the evidence provided before him or her, he can be able to prosecute. Mm -hmm. We believe that one of the issues that about issues of loan, for example, you might have heard, uh, we got about uh, the government uh, want to secure about 13 billion uh, US dollars, I think, from Dubai, one of the companies in Dubai. But if you look at most of the agreements that are signed by government, the, the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs, which act as the Attorney General, mm. mostly is not consulted to provide legal advice and consent. Mm. So we are basically saying also you need to establish an independent office of the Attorney General mm. who then uh, assists government on legal matters and, 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 and you, you separate it from the Ministry of Justice and Constitutional Affairs. So we are also saying um, you need to have a reform on that. The other reform is within the judiciary. And we believe that uh, judges and the justices of the Court of Appeal and Supreme Court mm -hmm. should, not be, uh, should not be appointed by the president. Rather, they should be uh, recruited uh, through an open and competitive uh, process by the, the Judicial Service Commission and then go to parliament and then the president does the last appointment. Mm -hmm. And we're also saying the president does not have any other power to remove any judge or justices mm. of the courts. Mm. So th those are some of the major, the many reforms that we are proposing. But also just to emphasize, we are aware that the economic situation back home is very, very serious. That was my next question yeah. actually, because we to look, want to look at, because this is one of the main uh, uh, pillar in uh, the, uh, the four thematic areas that uh, you are being discussed, you have been discussing here uh, for the last almost uh, one month. So let's talk about uh, the economy from your perspective and what reforms are you uh, putting forward there? Yeah, uh, basically you see, the issue of our, our, our economy is basically about mismanagement mm. and misappropriation of, of funds and lack of top priorities of government. And I want to take you back. Remember, between 2012 and 2013, mm. the government announced austerity measures. And in those austerity measures, mm. uh, government indicated that they are going to pause some developmental projects mm. and uh, they could not continue with the development, uh, development projects. However, even with the hostility measures that they, are, they were in after today, they still continue to live in luxury. Uh, in luxury, mm. they still continue to purchase expensive vehicles, government vehicles, for example. They still continue to live in a very luxurious way, and they expect the people of South Sudan to live in in austerities. So the issue is not that we don't have money. Mm -hmm. We have money, but the problem has been misappropriation. Mm -hmm. Others call it corruption. Some of us call it looting or public funds. And I'm happy to hear that the parliament is picking this up, uh, where I, I just heard from the news of iRadio where the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, the Honorable Martin Elia Lomuro, was grilled by parliament yesterday to explain the $10 million that was given to him mm. to facilitate the peace um, uh, implementation mechanism. So we are proposing uh, that there is need, for example, to do an all-life audit uh, to you know, one of the things in South Sudan we don't understand is that we don't know our debt burden. Mm -hmm. uh, who do we owe and how much do we owe uh, people uh, in our foreign debts? So we are we are calling for an all life audit, mm -hmm. where we have to audit um, the, the, uh, both the resources that we have as a country, and and and, and, and that audit then will be able to provide us uh, with a very good report in terms of. Uh, how much money we owe people mm -hmm. and how our resources have been mismanaged mm -hmm. and how we can secure this money back mm -hmm. because these are public funds. These are not individual, uh, individual uh, funds. So, and then also we ensure that there are reforms within the, the financial institutions and accountability. One of the things also done is the accountability aspect of it. Nobody wants to account. I can't remember the last time that the government, the executive account to parliament, you know, the Auditor General has produced so many reports, but nothing happened to those reports. So we believe that you need to have an independent um, anti-corruption commission, for example, with prosecuting powers. 
uh, like what happened in some of the countries where they, they don't need to go to the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs mm -hmm. to seek for prosecuting power. So we, we want the Anti-Corruption Commission to be empowered to prosecute people who have corrupted money, people who you misuse public funds. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so that will be able to really uh, re recover. Lastly is the issue do with the, how we manage our oil resources. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have reserve. We have, they have exhausted the, the reserve. Uh, so we, uh, we believe that there is need for proper management of the system. Lastly is that we are also advocating that every funds of the government must be put under one single account as opposed to different institutions of government having different accounts. So you have a single account so that it will be easy for you to be able uh, to manage. But most importantly, you need to liberate. There was a story of government having one single account, but we, uh, we are yet to follow up whether it's being operationalized or, or not, yes. Yeah. And uh, Wani, with all what we are talking about here, and especially at the Tumaini Initiative here in Nairobi, having different views on the, the constitution, on the economy, and also uh, talking about governance. But back home there, this, the government is talking about elections in December uh, this year. I want your take on that. Uh, you know, elections is a process. Election is not an event that happens overnight. You wake up in the morning and you go to vote. The election is a process. And as PCCA, we had met our 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 position clear on elections mm -hmm. we say it, there are key prerequisites that need to be met before you conduct elections mm -hmm. uh, one of the key prerequisites which is even in the agreement by the way mm -hmm. i think should be article 6.10 of the peace agreement mm -hmm. and some other uh, uh, articles of the agreement or provisions of the agreement indicates that for you to conduct an election you must have a new constitution so you organize election in accordance with the constitution not in accordance with the law Yes, you, you have the National Election Act, but the constitution that we have right, right now, which I participated in writing it, I'm, I'm talking about the Constitutional Amendment Act Number no. 6, mm -hmm. uh, which gave the article no, uh, legitimacy and constitutional uh, order. We have five vice presidents in the current constitution. Mm -hmm. So are you telling me that you're going to go for election with the five vice presidents as running mate? Because you ought to amend the constitution so that it can be able to appreciate Elections. Not if they amend so, the constitution yes. before the elections. Uh, yeah, if, even if they are to amend the constitution to appreciate the election, you have to amend almost all the articles because we have so far amended everything, including even the preamble, by the way. Mm. The preamble of the 2011 constitution was amended mm. and we had to uh, incorporate the one of the agreement and, and delete the, the, the previous preamble that we had. Remember the one that we had with the people mm -hmm. of South Sudan? It had to be edited. Mm -hmm. you know? So you need a constitution as a key prerequisite for elections. Mm. Because as I said, elections must be conducted in accordance with the constitution and the law. But there is also a talk that how can you uh, have a permanent constitution with uh, uh, members of parliament who are appointees of, uh, of the revitalized peace agreement? Why can't you have elected MPs to, have, uh, to, our, to work on a permanent constitution? Our, is that argument still ongoing back there? Our, our argument is that you don't need to take the constitution to parliament. Our agreement is that, which has happened in so many countries, including, I think, Kenya, Uganda, mm. and, 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 and some other countries, where uh, the, national the National Constitutional Conference is transformed to be a, a constituency assembly. Mm. Uh, so for us, our argument is that you don't need to take the Constitution to Parliament. What you need is that you transform the National Constitutional Conference into a constituency assembly, and then after they pass the constitution, you take the constitution for the referendum. Then after it is signed. How many people are we talking about here in the, in uh, the conference, for instance? You could talk about 1,500. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but remember, we are saying it must be put on constitutional referendum. Mm -hmm. So after after the national constitutional conference, you take the constitution to the people through a referendum, mm -hmm. and after that, then the president sign. So you don't need to take the constitution to parliament. That, that is our argument, and this has happened in so many countries, as I said, in, in, including Uganda, where the National Constitutional Conference was transformed into, into a constituency. And how assembly. practical is this in a country like South Sudan? You're talking about referendum because the, the same scenario, we're talking about elections and uh, conflicts in some parts of the country, looking at uh, the remote areas, access to, to those areas, roads, and among many others. This is the same argument that people are talking about uh, on elections. What about the referendum? How would you uh, reach out to uh, the people? You know, one, uh, one of the things that I think we need to appreciate as a country is that 
The constitution is written for the people. Mm. It's the people writing the constitution, not the politician, uh, not other people writing the constitution. Mm. So we believe that if you are to conduct a constitutional referendum, you deal with two, two issues. One, mm. you deal with issues of ownership, people will be able to own. Remember, remember the reason why the CPA is, is owned by the people, known by the people, because there was wider public participation, there was wider consultation with the people. Mm. And, and so you needed a constitutional referendum so that people will have ownership of the document. People will be able to understand because you know, a referendum doesn't mean that it has to happen like tomorrow. Mm. There are so many processes that people need to understand uh, some of the articles and some of the issues that the, 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 the proponents of the, of the constitutional referendum wanted the people to, uh, to really vote on, 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 this, on this issue. The second issue deal with legitimacy so that people will be able to, mm. to legitimize the process and say, it, mm. and say this, this is this is our constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, no, uh, so for us, we believe that the end product of, of, of this process is mm -hmm. that you have a constitutional referendum where people approve the constitution, mm -hmm. then the president sign it. So you don't need to take this constitution to parliament. I think there are a lot of questions that resonate around the constitution mm -hmm. uh, making process. Uh, one of the things that I want to point out is that the constitution making process is not a new process. Uh, this process has started way back Others say 1972, when we had that disparable agreement. Others talk about the CPA and other uh, processes that we have. So we, as PCCA, our position is that it must be people's-led and people's own constitution, but not the way the Artigono is doing it. Because the way the Artigono is doing it is people's-led and people's own constitution-making process, but they're giving themselves 55%. Representation in the National Constitutional Review Commission and in the National Constitutional Conference. So our position is very clear on the talks. We are saying one, mm -hmm. we want the NCRC dissolved and disbanded because it will not deliver constitution to the people of South Sudan. The National Constitutional Review Commission was formed since 2012. After now, they have not done anything uh, with with the constitution making process. So we are saying. You need to dissolve the National Constitutional Review Commission and then establish a lean, hybrid, mm -hmm. uh, independent body, constitution-making uh, body. Hybrid, we mean involvement of both South Sudanese and non-South uh, Sudanese. By the way, the Namibia Constitution was written by three uh, experts who were South Africans. Mm -hmm. The Kenyan Constitution was written by nine uh, panel of experts, and from the nine panel, panel of experts, they had three uh, people who are, uh, who are non-Kenyans or, or, or foreigners who assisted in the writing of the Kenyan constitution. So the Kenya, Kenya is so far one of the celebrated democracies in the region mm -hmm. and you could see how their constitution can be able to, has, has, has able to bring them together. The constitution has able to, uh, to advocate and, and advance uh, uh, democracy. So you're saying we, are, we can, we can, we can. Uh, absolutely, uh, you don't. Uh, you're saying we can have. Uh, yeah, you don't need. Yeah, by yeah, you, mm. yeah, you need like nine to or eleven people. Mm -hmm. You don't need fifty-seven people to do what? Mm -hmm. Because you have to spend a lot of money on them. Mm -hmm. And these fifty-seven members, fifty-five percent are political leaders, mm -hmm. and everybody has to advance their their political agenda as opposed to advancing the interests of the people of South Sudan. I want to address one of the issues of, of location. I think this is one of the things that people have raised. We are not saying that people should not participate, for example. We are saying, for example, uh, you will agree with me, Akile, is that the CPA was negotiated and signed in, in Naivasa, mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It was taken to Southern Sudan by then, mm -hmm. which then gave us the referendum. And in the referendum, people voted for the cessation of of South Sudan. Mm. Was, was the CPA negotiated and signed in South Sudan? No. Mm -hmm. But it gave us a country called the Republic of South Sudan. Mm -hmm. The ASIS, that was signed in 2015, mm -hmm. that gave the Tigono a legitimacy. Was it signed and, uh, and agreed from, from, uh, from Juba? No. It was, dis it was negotiated and signed from Addis Ababa. The 2018? Yes. No, yeah, no, the one of 2015. 2015, yes. Right. Then in 2018, you had the revitalized mm -hmm. uh, uh, Agreement, mm -hmm. which was again negotiated in Addis Ababa and Khartoum, mm -hmm. then signed sign in what? Signed in, uh, in, in Addis Ababa, mm -hmm. carried in the plane to Juba, mm -hmm. and gave the current article legitimacy for six years. Mm -hmm. So the, the idea that you cannot have those conversations outside the country is a non issue because we had 
documents, we had processes, mm -hmm. including the one that led us in, in, into, in, into our independence, mm -hmm. discussed outside the country. So for us, and the reason why we say it's difficult for you to start the process also than one is because you have shrinking political and civil space. Mm -hmm. For example, right now in Juba, you cannot have a gathering of five people and you don't get a security clearance from, 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 from the national security. You mean more than five? Because yeah, yeah, five yeah. friends can sit. <laughs> you see, <laughs> even, even sometimes you're having a coffee with your friend, you'll mm -hmm. be asked, maybe you're having a meeting. So we are saying uh, also there's a problem of freedom of speech and there's no freedom after speech. So we are basically saying that you can have a first draft of the constitution through the two main initiatives. That's why we are saying we are not here for power sharing agreement. We needed that we leave Nairobi when we have the first draft of the constitution. Earlier on, I mentioned that first of all, consultation was done. In, do, I, I talk about the national dialogue. The national dialogue, people spoke mm -hmm. on those issues. You know, the grassroots consultation was done. Those are constitutional issues. All the issues that we are talking about here in, in Nairobi were also articulated and discussed in the national dialogue. Mm -hmm. I also talked about the, the Espelen Manifesto of 1983 mm -hmm. and 2008. Mm -hmm. You have the current constitution, you have mm -hmm. the RRCs. Mm -hmm. So for us, we believe that consultation was already done by the, the, through the national dialogue. What you do, you have to get those documents mm -hmm. and have a first constitutional draft. Mm -hmm. You take this constitution to the people. You make consultation to the people based on the draft that you have so that people are aware, people input mm -hmm. on, on the draft that you already have. Then you have a national constitutional conference in, in Juba, which then transform into a constituency assembly yes. that then approves it. And then you have the constitutional referendum and then the present sign. Yes, but Wani, here we have uh, the unity government delegates, we have uh, the opposition, we have... Uh, uh, the uh, civil society and also other stakeholders. Are you talking about the drafting of this constitution to be done by the group or by the delegates? No. Is that what, they, what you're trying to say? No. Mm -hmm. We are proposing that mm -hmm. the National Constitutional Conference to be done in Nairobi mm -hmm. will not only be the parties to the two main initiative. Mm -hmm. We are proposing that you need to have uh, people coming from South Sudan. Mm -hmm. You need to have people coming from the states, people coming from the counties. And they should be brought uh, 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 to Nairobi, and we have the discussion here. Because the environment in South Sudan, in Juba, is very volatile. That it cannot allow people to have a very constructive uh, uh, conversation and discussion. So we are not saying mm. the, these parties who are here should be mm. the ones to write. No, mm. we are saying the National Constitutional Conference that, that will be held in Nairobi mm. will be a very inclusive mm -hmm. uh, process that will include farmers, it, uh, it, it, it will include... Um, the, 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 the carol keepers, for example, mm. uh, it will include uh, uh, teachers' union or trade unions. It will include different stakeholders, mm -hmm. women, youth, right. disability, right. all of them. Right. In uh, one minute before we wind up, uh, Wani Michael, we'll continue to have similar conversations since we're here. And uh, I would like you to send to give a message to the people of South Sudan back home there who are listening or watching us. A message of hope. What should they really expect from this uh, uh, Tumaini initiative? Thank you. I think our last message is PCCA. We stand with the people of South Sudan. We understand your suffering uh, uh, very clearly because most of us have been with you guys. And for us, we're in, we want to assure the people of South Sudan we stand with them as PCCA. What we are bringing on table is not for us to say our power, it's for us to address the fundamental issues that is facing our country. We are committed to that so that we have genuine peace in South Sudan not a cocktail, uh, not a, a piece that you only serve the individual selfish interests of people. So we, we really want to assure people that keep pushing and let them stand with us that you need a constitutional agreement. We need a constitution that will be able to address our issues because we are more or less a lawlessness country. We don't respect and abide by the constitution. So once we fix that, the country will, will, will be able to move forward. And let's continue working for peace. And want, I want to appeal to the people who are not part of this process, specifically the uh, uh, nurse of the Thomas Rilo. We have already reached out to some of them and said they need to join the, the Too Many Initiative so that we move together as a country. So that this should be the last right. process of peace that we are holding right. uh, for our people. So I want to assure the caller from WOW that as PCCA, we are rooted in issues of rights and freedoms, and we believe in that. And uh, we, we want every citizen to enjoy that right. The issues of violation of agreement is one of the key issues that we are discussing in the Tumaine initiative, that we don't need the repeat of the RRCs. We want a process 
where you have very clear implementation mechanisms, you have very clear implementation instruments, you have very clear implementation modalities. Mm -hmm. and, and we had presented very good proposals to mm -hmm. the mediator in terms of how do you have an agreement that have very clear implementation. As I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. in PCCA, we believe that you need a constitutional agreement. And a constitutional agreement is absolutely different from the power power sharing agreement. Because with the constitutional agreement, it leads us into uh, enacting a new a new uh, uh, constitution. The issues of elections, I mentioned it very clear, that as PCCA, uh, we believe that for your us to have elections, you first need to meet the prerequisites that are required. Uh, one of the key prerequisites is the constitution. You need to have a constitution. Mm -hmm. You need to have uh, uh, security, uh, stability in the country, because you cannot have election when there are still pockets of violence in the country, when people even in Juba are still living in fear. Uh, so you need that first to stabilize the security so that you'll be able to go for elections. You cannot also have elections if you don't have the political and civil space op uh, open. Uh, I, as I earlier mentioned, for you to have a gathering of five people, you need, still need clearance from the national security. Uh, the national security clears gathering, including political uh, so, uh, ga gathering. That's on meetings and events yes. as well. Uh, you talked about uh, access and uh, in security because uh, on the issue of elections. And you earlier talked about having national conference maybe here in Nairobi, bringing people from the state. And then going back to the people, and how will you still have referendum? Because it's similar to elections. It involves people. Yeah, absolutely. That's why we say it in the implementation mechanism, we suggested the role of uh, the mediation to be able to be engaged in the implementation mechanism. We don't want the replicate of RGMEC. We wanted something different. So we believe that for, for us to have elections and for us to even have a, a constitutional uh, process in the country, there are key uh, ingredients or there are key things that the government needs to start doing. And one of the things is that you don't need to arrest uh, people because of the way they have expressed themselves. The dissent, you know, in every society or in every country, there are those who agree with the government and there are those like us who do, does not agree with the way they are governing the country and the way they are running the, the country. So we believe as PCCA that there will be no election in 2024 because you don't have uh, the prerequisite that has been met. We don't have a constitution, they're still going to do registration and we, you cannot do registration if you don't ascertain the population of the people. So you need census first to understand. So I'm wondering, you're, you're going to register people where? Mm. Uh, have you demarcated the polling station that people have to register? So we really believe that the, the, the process ought to be transparent, the process ought to be accountable. Most importantly, it must be in accordance with the constitution and the law. And, so and, and, for us, we believe mm. that SPCCA mm. first meet things, the, the, the requirements, security, stability, mm. uh, constitution making process, uh, create a conducive environment for election. Then, then we shall have a conversation about election. Mm. In fact, we want to vote, but you you cannot vote in a in a, in a situation that you are in right now in South Sudan. And and Rajab uh, Mohandis described it as uh, pregnancy. That's uh, what I can recall we, in the conversation we had yeah. uh, this week. Let's talk about uh, Turuk talked about the use of uh, resources and need for comprehensive peace. Uh, briefly say something about that. Yeah, um, we believe that uh, for many years. Uh, our resources have been squandered, mm -hmm. uh, and people have embezzled public funds. Uh, others say they have been looting of public funds. So as, as, as an institution, we believe that our management of our resources ought to be transparent, ought to be accountable. And we presented very, very tangible uh, recommendations. As I said earlier, all the recommendations of the People's Coalition for Civil Action came from the National Dialogue. We are not coming in with the new ideas. We're not coming in with a new proposal. One, one of the proposals we, 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 we sort of presented is the control of budget, for example. Mm -hmm. Because you may agree with me that up to now, civil servants are not paid salary. Mm -hmm. From the previous budget, eight months, they have not been paid salary. Now, if you have a government that cannot even pay salaries of civil servants for eight months, and then you ask, what is their sovereign duty that the government is doing if they cannot be able to, to, to meet this basis. Mm. So for us, we are saying there must be proper way of, of controlling our resources. That's why in, I indicated earlier we are proposing that all the resources of the country must be put under one basket, under one account, treasury account. Mm. You know, and you need to ensure that the central bank is independent uh, from what uh, I want to borrow the words of one of the liberators, the General Alewa Yen, who mm. said 
commercial bourgeoisies, mm. the, 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 the people who seem to be holding the economy hostage. Mm -hmm. So it is, it, it, it is important that the accountability institution, mm. like the Auditor General Office, like the Anti-Corruption Commission, like the Central Bank, they need to be independent so that they're able to, mm. to, to deliver on, 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 on the economic reform. Secondly, also the issues of adhering to the budget line. Mm. Because you find out that some offices or some ministries spend more money than the rest. Mm -hmm. I listened to iRadio earlier on mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Parliament summoned the, the Honorable uh, uh, Martin Elia to account for 10 million mm -hmm. uh, US dollars, which mm -hmm. was meant for the implementation of the agreement. Mm -hmm. So there must be proper accountability mm -hmm. mechanism put in place. And that's what we as PCCA, we are proposing. Mm -hmm. For example, as I indicated earlier, we said we needed the Anti-Corruption Commission to have prosecuting power. Mm -hmm. That once you have been implicated of corruption, they take you direct to court mm -hmm. and the court will deal with you and you and you'll be held accountable to that effect mm -hmm. but as the law stands now the anti-corruption commission has to go to the ministry of justice and constitutional affairs to get approval you know and take the file to the ministry to be able to prosecute mm -hmm. so so we we we, we need this uh, economic uh, institution but most importantly we feel mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. uh, the urgent thing that you need to address mm -hmm. is to ensure that uh, people are able to afford food uh, because uh, we understand, as, as I said, PCCA, we resonate with the people. We understand people are going hungry in a day without meals. So we believe that mm. the first thing to arrest this, this, the situation is so that we provide uh, af affordable um, uh, uh, food mm -hmm. uh, uh, for the people by having a very robust uh, policy on how we manage our resources. Mm. Uh, right. uh, uh, yeah. So some of the proposals we have in the government that they are so far uh, having we don't agree to them, mm. you know, because we believe that uh, there is need to increase, for example, productivity and, 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 and production, and there's right. need to connect to right. the food uh, baskets, and people should have access mm. to those basic necessities that they need. Right, and, and finally, Wani, uh, Banjang from POC3 in Juba is, asking, is, 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 is casting doubts, uh, saying what's going to be new in this uh, process. This is like a repetition of agreements and agreements, referring to this to Mayani. So he's looking at the guarantees that what makes you think what assurance would you really give to the people back there that this uh, exercise will actually change the situation? But also he mentioned uh, one of the recommendations of uh, the National Dialogue is to have a system of, uh, federal system of governance in the, in the country. What's your take? Yeah, um, the, the, the last question about federalism, uh, we, we also took the recommendation of National, national Dialogue and presented uh, to the mediation in terms of federalism. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we also propose is that let, let's have a national conference on federalism so that people decide what type of federal system of government we want to, we want to undertake. Mm -hmm. But as, as an institution, we had already presented what the National Dialogue uh, recommend mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, federalism. Mm -hmm. With the question of people losing trust, we understand mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there have been a lot of peace processes in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. But I want to assure the people that uh, we in the PCCA, we, we understand these issues. That's why we and other stakeholders are advocating for constitutional agreement. And, and I want to emphasize that for us, we stand for a constitutional agreement as opposed to power sharing. What you had before mm -hmm. are power sharing agreements. That's why you see you have five vice president, five of them, you have cabinet, you have you know, huge cabinet, all this. So we are saying we need uh, for example, a lean government that accommodates the economy that we have at the moment in the country. You cannot have a, a blatant government, mm -hmm. then you don't have the resources. Mm -hmm. So we believe that the only thing that we can take to our people, which is tangible, is that when we leave the Nairobi process with a, a protocol on the constitution, uh, on the constitution, mm -hmm. that will be the dividend. That's why we say we don't need power sharing agreement. We need a constitutional agreement that addresses the key uh, the fundamental issues that affect our people mm -hmm. and affect our country. And this is what we stand for. And that is why, by the way, as PCCA, we have an, another stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We presented some, some of the radical uh, proposals that we feel are the only way can take us out, out, out of the system. Because for us, we think you cannot be doing the same thing over time and again, and you expect different results. So, we are thinking outside the box mm. and how we can be able to rescue our people. So we are here to protect the interest of the people, not our own interest. As I said, nobody from the PCCA has any political interest 
of holding any political office. Mm -hmm. For us, we believe that we must deliver peace, right. stability, uh, and constitutionalism to the people of South Sudan. Right.